There are many solutions available in Rails for moving a long-running job into a background process, but they each have their own advantages, and Sidekick is no exception. This gem is probably most similar to Rescue, which I covered in episode 271. Its primary difference, though, is that it handles multiple jobs concurrently using threads instead of processes. This can really save on memory. Now, its interface is similar to other solutions, so I'm going to go through that really quickly, but then focus more on what makes Sidekick unique. So here's the example app I'll be working with. It's quite simple. You just paste in a snippet of code in a given language, and when you post a snippet, it will display it with syntax highlighting. Now, if we check out the snippets controller create action, we can see how it's doing the syntax highlighting. After the snippet saves, it's going to make a request to an external web service to highlight it using pigments. So this service was set up by Trevor Turk. You just submit a post request giving a language and a code snippet, and it will return a body containing the highlighted code. Now it's a good idea to move web service calls into a background process, so this way if it's slow or down, the user won't be impacted directly. So let's do this using Sidekick. Now like Rescue, Sidekick uses Redis to manage its job queue, so you'll need to install that first. If you're on Mac OS X, I recommend using Homebrew with brew install Redis. And then you can start up Redis by using this command given. Next, I'll go to the gem file of this app and add the Sidekick gem, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. Now there are several interfaces that Sidekick supports. The most common is to create a separate worker class, so I'm going to do that here. Make a new directory called workers, so it will be auto-loaded, and make a new file in here. I'll call this pigmentsworker.rb. And then I'll define a class in here with that name and include the Sidekick uh, worker module, and I'll talk more later about what that module really does. And this assumes that you have a perform method in here, which actually does the job that you want to do in the background. So we'll need to move that uh, syntax highlighting code from the controller into here. So going to my snippets controller, this here is a bit of code that I need to add to my worker and then queue it up to run in the background. To do this, I can call pigments worker dot perform async. And this will add it to Redis and then trigger that perform method asynchronously. Now that perform method will need access to this current snippet object. While we could just pass this directly in as an argument, that's not really good practice because this needs to be serialized into Redis and it's better to serialize simpler objects than more complex objects like active record models. So in this case, I'm just going to pass in the snippet ID so that way we can fetch the record again inside that perform method. So going back to the worker, I'll just paste in that code from the controller and the snippet ID gets passed into here, which I'm going to just fetch by calling snippet.find based on that snippet ID. And we'll need to change these instance variables to local variables here because that's what we're using in this method. The last step is to start up the background process by running the sidekick command in your Rails app directory. You might need to prefix this with bundle exec. There we go, now it's listening for new jobs. Now let's try this again. You might need to restart the Rails app for it to pick up that worker, but when I post a snippet, it's just going to uh, not do the syntax highlighting at first because that's going to happen asynchronously in the background and be picked up by Sidekick. But when I reload this page, you can see now it's done, so the code is syntax highlighted. Now here are some things to keep in mind when working with Sidekick. One is that it will automatically retry a job if there is an error. So if an exception is raised at any point in this code, just make sure that there are no side effects of it running that same code again. Uh, this is especially important when working with emails because you don't want to send the same user the same email. If you want to disable that retry feature, you can pass in the sidekick option setting retry to false. But I'll just keep it enabled here because it's quite handy, especially when communicating with external services. Now another thing to keep in mind is that all code used by a worker should be thread safe. I go into more detail on thread safety in episode 365, but in general you should avoid sharing data that is mutable between instances. Uh, so in Ruby that often means data at the class level, so uh, defining variables here at the class that is mutable isn't a good idea when you're working with threads, so you should try to avoid that kind of thing. And not only does your code need to be thread safe, but any libraries that your worker uses needs to be thread safe as well. Now you should also be aware of the pool size limit in your database config file. This defaults to five, which means only five threads can be connected to your database at one time. You'll probably want to bump this up, maybe even as high as 25, which I believe is the default limit of how many jobs will run concurrently in Sidekick. But you can play around with this number depending on your setup. Now that you know how to set up Sidekick, let's take a look at some of its cool features. Much of these are documented nicely on the wiki. 
One thing I'm really glad to see is how easy it is to schedule a job to be performed at a future time. For example, instead of calling perform async on this worker, we could call perform in and then provide a, provide a time duration such as one hour, and then that job will not start processing until that given time is reached. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this situation, but it can be very useful for, let's say, clearing caches or something. Another neat feature is the ability to prioritize queues. Let's say you have multiple workers and you want certain ones to be processed first. To do this, we'll need to assign a worker to a specific queue. You can do that with a sidekick option of queue and specifying a name. Let's just call this one hi. Now, if you don't specify a queue, the name of the queue will be default. And now when you run this sidekick command, you can specify which queues you want to be processed with the dash queue option. So here I'll process the high queue and have the priority or wait set to five. And I'll also process the default queue here and leave that at its default weight, which is one. There we go, now the high queue will take priority. Now when it comes to deployment, Sidekick includes a Capistrano recipe. You can just add this require line into your deploy.rb file. And if you have custom options you need to pass into the Sidekick command, like the queue option I showed earlier, you can pass it in through a sidekick.yaml file in your config directory. And here's an example of what it might look like. Next, let's talk about monitoring the workers. Sidekick includes a web interface, much like Rescue, which is a Sinatra app that you can mount within your Rails app in the routes file. So going to the routes config file, I can call mount here and set the uh, Sidekick web interface, tell it to mount it at, let's say, slash Sidekick. Now this isn't included by default, so it's also necessary to require this. We can just add a line at the top here saying to require sidekick slash web. And there's also a couple of changes we need to make to the gem file of this application, because we need to include both Sinatra and the slim gems in here, and set the require to false on Sinatra. You'll need to run the bundle command to install this, and then restart your Rails app to try it out. So now if you visit the sidekick path of your Rails app, you get this nice interface telling you what jobs have been processed, if there are any failures, what workers are currently active, what queues are involved, and a whole lot more. Now you'll likely want to password protect this interface in production, so check out the Sidekick wiki for documentation on how to do that. Now I want to finish up this episode by exploring some of Sidekick's source code because there's always a lot to learn when doing that. I'm going to start with this module that we ended up including here, Sidekick Worker. So that can be found under the lib directory, under Sidekick, and then under the worker.rb file. Now this module is quite simple. Uh, there's really only one instance method, this logger method, which can be handy. And then we have several class methods, such as perform async, which we called in our controller. This basically ends up adding this hash of details to Redis. And then we also have our sidekick options, which we called earlier in our worker. And here are documentation for the various options you can pass into there. Now something else I want to show you is middleware. This is not to be confused with rack middleware. This is basically just some behavior that uh, happens around the processing of a job. Now there's client-side middleware, which happens before it's actually inserted into Redis, and then server-side, which happens before the job is actually processed. So this is what handles the retrying of jobs, logging them, and I want to show you this one here, exception handler, which basically taps into a variety of exception notification handler such as air break or exception notifier and you can just configure these check out the wiki documentation for details on how to set this up this is really a nice example of how simple a sidekick middleware can be and you might want to consider writing your own if you want to extend sidekicks behavior one more thing i want to show you is the sidekick processor class this is what actually handles the processing of the job after it's pulled from redis here you can see the different middleware that is added by default and when a job is processed, it basically goes through each of the middleware, invokes each one, and then calls perform on the worker. All pretty simple. Now I also want to point out this line here, includes celluloid. This is really the key to a sidekick's multi-threaded behavior. Celluloid is an amazing project that can really help deal with concurrency in Ruby. I won't be going into detail on it here, but it's definitely worth checking out. Well, that's it for this episode on Sidekick. Mike Perham has done an excellent job on this project, and I recommend you try it out for yourself. The only reason I can see using something like Rescue instead is if you don't want to deal with a multi-threaded environment. But really, I'm glad to see concurrency getting a bigger focus on Ruby recently, and it's a good idea to get in the habit of writing thread-safe code for yourself. Well, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. This week's pro episode is on celluloid. This puts an object-oriented spin on multi-threaded development so you don't have to work with threads and mutexes directly. 
Here I cover the basic features of celluloid through several different examples. To watch that episode and gain access to all previous Pro and Revised episodes, visit railscast.com pro, and you can sign up there for just $9 per month.